analysis with over 70 years combined experience. This is the Bob Ryan and Jeff Goodman podcast. NBA, some college, a little bit of everything. You know what I say, but it wasn't going to happen here. It's that time for the Bob Ryan, Gary Tangwood podcast right here, CLNS Media. We are brought to you by Price Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Price Picks. Bob, we've seen this before with the Celtics. It was a very frustrating game against Atlanta. They blew a 30 point lead. And just because I'm a New England sports fan, this stuff really irritates me still. I understand they have a comfortable lead. I understand they're the best team in the East. And I understand that they'll probably go to the NBA Finals. It's happened before. And I I know we'll be able to segue to the Milwaukee game. The same thing happened to them. It's just very frustrating for me to see this, that it just, it it burns me. I'm pissed off. Um, I I funny how I found out. I was was watching... Caitlin Clark, I didn't even want to watch the game. I figured they'll kick Atlanta's ass and, you know, no worry about it. And I didn't know till I saw the score on the crawl that they had lost the game. And it wasn't until about an hour later that I saw on X somebody complaining about fuming, a, a Celtic fan fuming about blowing a 30-point lead. And I said, oh, my God. And so I didn't know any details until the next doing when I read about it. Okay. I thought they had this out of their system. We, I, I, I deluded myself to think that these guys, this is why they are not the favorites. This is why Denver remains the favorite until further notice. They have proven themselves, and the Celtics have not. And I'm talking about you, Jason Tatum, as much as I am about you, Mr. Brown. Everybody talked about Brown. It's Tatum's the one that's got this act up, to come up big. And, and not do dumb things and, and not do logical things and, 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 and do the right thing in, the, in, the, in these moments, okay? Um, but they're all collect When you blow a 30-point lead, it's collective, of course. But, but ultimately, I'm telling you, this is why I, I love, love watching them. I'm rooting like hell for them, but I don't trust them yet. I don't trust them, uh, and, and this is Exhibit A. And this, is, it, this should never it, – it, there's no way that this should happen to that degree that you blow a 30 point lead to it. I'm sorry. And they didn't even have Trey young. So I right. know, I know the Celtics are playing shorthanded, but they've been proven that they can play shorthanded because they do have, in fact, the best one to nine in the league. They got the best one to five, one to seven, six, seven, eight, and nine. They have the best talent in the league, but that doesn't mean you're going to win. And necessarily. And they've proven that with this. So they have something to prove. And starting tonight, as we speak on the morning of, of the rematch against Atlanta and that strange scheduling, that doesn't happen too often. I, I, uh, and and you have a two game series, but with with the three day two days off, it's bizarre scheduling. Absolutely yeah, it's crazy. Bizarre. It's weird. It's weird. I mean, a strange they, schedule. So anyway, so I'm with you, Gary. We have a. I think we we deserve to be angry, and I think they better, they got something to prove, and and uh, and and I want to see how they react to this thing. Um, you know, it, it's about the big picture, folks. They're going to have the best seed. They're going to finish with 60-some wins. They're going to do all this nice stuff. And and then the real stuff's going to matter And after that. And, and uh, they have to prove themselves with me, to me, that's for damn sure. Well, I'm with you. And I'm glad you agree with me because I was wondering if I was just being a little too hard considering how well they played this season. But... And I understand what Joe Mazzulla's doing. He's playing a lot of different guys. You know, he's emptying oh. the bench, and I understand that. But with seven minutes to go, he puts everybody back in. Yeah, no, I like the way he's handling it that this, this in the general terms. And and but they just didn't do the job that they should do. Yeah, no, it it was, it, you know, it, it does in the big picture. You know, it means they're going to win sixty six instead of sixty seven. You know, that's that's all, that's all it's going to mean in that regard. More right. than likely, more than likely. But that's not the issue. The issue was is who they really are and what they get and how, how, what they're made of for the, for April and May and June. That's what that's what our issue is now. Right. And now you wonder: Are they just a regular season darling? Yeah. You know. And the other thing I want to remind people, um, in general terms, is that uh, when you're looking at uh, of, of people and you're thinking, well, they're not going to be a this certain uh, uh, this team won't be a contender that I can give you enough examples over the years of, of surprise teams that caught fire in the playoffs and, and went sure. along. Maybe they didn't win the play, the championship, but they got to the finals. Celtics encountered two of them in the seventies with the Rockets twice. 
and there, there was a year, and, and don't forget the Knicks in 99, they were the eighth seed, and they got to the finals. And, and the Celtics themselves in 69, I know people say, oh my God, that's the Pleistocene era. Well, it was real basketball, folks, I'm telling you. And they finished fourth in the Eastern Conference and were not remotely considered to be a favorite, and they won the championship. So teams can come out of nowhere and 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 catch fire at the right time. So don't don't think that it's, it's they're going to waltz to the finals because they're not. I think a I think a perfect uh, current example of that is Miami. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Miami. Right. So that that we 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 got that we encountered that phenomenon. Uh, yeah, absolutely. What, what I also like what I liked about this game as an NBA fan and as a basketball fan aside you know the celtic fan in me was was ticked off like you but also it just sheds a light on how damn good you have to be to play in the league i mean deandre hunter goes out he hits the three-pointer at the end he has 24 points trey young's not playing all of a sudden the atlanta guys go wait a minute we're gonna make a statement and that's why you know i defend scalabrini a lot with people you know people will you know make joke about scal and i say listen if you're one of the 300 best players to play in this league, you're pretty no. damn good. You're absolutely and, right. And you're that's why right. when you play a team, you know, you give a team like Atlanta, you know, life, you you it just brings the focus on how good you have to be to play in this league. It's one other thing that we, I know we want to get to because we, and we can tie it in with the last night's comeback that sure. the Lakers made in the fourth quarter against uh, against Milwaukee. And, and why these things seem to happen. It's not exclusive to the Celtics. We're, we're concerned about them because they're a team that should win, that should be competing for a championship. Uh, but the, this three-point shot world that we live in, right? I think this is at the root of the problem. Well, you games never by over. It, you live by it and die by it. Now, right. I'll give you the numbers on last night with the just, just to show you how the, the game – is being played uh, now. And last uh, night's game, the Lakers did rally 128, 124 of them in walking a double overtime. Lakers were down 19. Continue. Never had a lead until the second overtime, which is, you know, if I'm a Laker fan, I love that game. You know, that's a that's the kind of game you 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 smile all day long that they could win a game like that. But um M Milwaukee took 119 shots, 68 twos and 51 threes. M LA took 108 shots. 64 twos and 44 threes. Um, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. In fact, that I was looking for it to be 50% threes. But what I'm saying is, you know, when you're living by it and dying by it, and, and it's not easy, apparently, we're learning this as we go along. It's right. not easy to get shift your mentality to, hey, we're not we're not in the three mode tonight. We better go to two. And people, and, and, and you know, stop the bleeding by just, we got to get to the line. We got to do a set of play. Well, I, you, you set up, run a play to get my best shooter. A, 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 oh, my God, the dreaded 17-footer, you know. Although maybe there's a diminishing number of guys that can make that shot anymore. I don't know. Maybe not, you know, they, not everybody is DeMar DeRozan who doesn't take threes. But I, it's the mentality of the game now that you, you just keep firing those threes. And, and, and if the other team... They, then their luck has turned around. Now they're hitting them, and you and you know it's 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 about the, if if we took the three out of these games, I don't think these things would happen as often as they do. Well, now. and I think that's why the league loves the three. And I personally, I know we disagree. I love the three because that means the game's never over. Well, yeah, and and I, I hate it because it distorts the game and right and and, and it's it's I get you know, that side play. We can have you know all right. So anyway. The, the Lakers, I, want, I, was, I think the most interesting thing left in the big picture in the NBA for the remaining season uh, is the Western Conference play-in possibility. Right. I'm looking at the numbers right now, okay? The 7, 8, 9, 10 are as follows. And that's who's the play-in that people, you know, remember, remind them. Sacramento, 42 and 30. Phoenix, 42 and 30. Tied. L.A., 40 and 32. Two games behind. Golden State 37 and 34. There were there were 10. But guess what, folks? Houston is one half game behind the Golden State. <laughs> Houston has sneaked up on the rail. You know, they had we knew they had young, raw talent. Right. When when Steven Silas had these guys. And now, you know, they, they they're they're coming to life. Jalen Green. I mean, you know, so the Houston's right there. And uh, they could be in and Golden State out, you know. And, and Golden State, you know, you just, you know, if you let them in, 
you know, you're going to have to pay respect, but, uh, but they might not get in. <laughs> so that'll be something. So I'm just keeping an eye on that one, but I um, think that's going to be the, the I, interesting I, I, thing down the stretch. I, I need to, as we've talked about Anthony Davis a lot and he's been hurt and we understand that. And what a shame, 34 points, 23 rebounds last yeah. night without LeBron. Um, and, you know, Reeves and Russell had terrific games as well for the Lakers. As best you can, if Anthony Davis is healthy for his career, no. where would you put him? If he were healthy for his career, he's entering into well, – in, well, first of all, he's in the top 20 all time. So I'll start with that. He's a top 20 all time player. If, he's, if, he's, if, if he gets a long enough career, they know that he won't be the big what if of our right. time. Uh, and, and he could go as high as in the 15s. I mean, he's a very skilled player. Very skilled player. This is a guy who in his NCAA championship game went over 10, and, and you can make an argument was the best player on the floor. Right. <laughs> I saw that game. You know, block shots, rebounds, passing. He knows how to play. And and it's just a matter of staying healthy, and, and no question. I mean, not everybody can get 34 and 23. That, 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 that's pretty good stuff. And and uh, and he can do that stuff. I, I'm I'm an admirer of his of his talent, and I, I want I want the guy to stay healthy, and then he deserves a career. And 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 he he's a he's a wonderful player. Yeah, the guy that fina- that fascinates me on that team because you know not too too long ago, a little more than a calendar year ago, I know who the hell he was, and that's Austin Reeves. Right. And starting with last year's playoffs, he he emerged. He has, his coming out party was the playoffs last year. And and now he's a he's a sol- he's a nice player he's a really nice player by the way as Kabir Square triple double last night and um, anyway the Lakers you know we can you don't want them around <laughs> if you're if you're nobody I'll go uh, once again uh, it seems like I say this every week every every time we get together uh, nobody's going to be clapping their hands and say oh goody goody we're playing the Lakers in the right. crowd. period there's just not and, well. Yeah, and one of the X factor guys there is Russell. If Russell plays under control and 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 you know plays a solid game, he's got skill. Um, you know, he, he's he's been maligned in different ways over his career, but he's got some skill. And and also I got a, a sneaky good guy that people, you know that people don't know much about is Dinwiddie. They picked up Dinwiddie and he had a big game last night. You know that they, they I don't you know you don't want to mess around with the Lakers in the playoffs and and, and if it, so I'm, I'm saying they're, and they look. They're, I'm, I'm sure they're going to be. I'm not pretty much sure they're going to be there in the playoffs. So we'll see what happens. I want them in. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. I want them in. in. You're right. I want the Lakers in. I want them um, in. I I got one for you. That I I, I must be just a complete basketball nerd i don't know why but nobody is talking about something that is one but it's a phenomenal thing going on not a, not only in the nba but in the world of sports and nobody's talking about it daniel gafford are you aware of what he's doing yes because hey, you know because, hey, because look, you told me most people don't know who he is first of all okay so for the record folks daniel gafford is a six nine hybrid big guy out of the University of Arkansas. He was born in El Dorado, Arkansas, which is the home of Lou Brock. I just want to fully, fully give you all the information you need here. He was a 2019 second round pick, number 38 in the draft by the Bulls. Last year, he got traded from Chicago to Washington to Dallas in the same year. Okay. Okay. In last year's, in the, in the 2021 playoffs, uh, as a, as a uh, bull, excuse me, he shot, 84.6% from the floor. You heard what I said. Nobody talked about it. This year, as we speak, in his last 10 games, he is 64 for 76. Do you know what I said? I did. I also okay. read it, yeah. He he has made, uh, and going into last night, he had made 33 straight field goals, which is too shy of the record set by a guy we're going to talk about, some guy named Chamberlain. And, from, uh, and that was set uh, from March 5th to March 13th, he, he, he made 33 straight field goals. And right now he's shooting 69% for the season. And as I said, in his last 10, uh, 10 games, 64 for 76. Now, granted, we know we're talking about dunks and putbacks, clearly. 
almost exclusively, right? The anti-three hero, the anti-three hero. Dunks and putbacks, which leads us, folks, to Wilt Chamberlain. Yes. And the youngins who have only heard of him like he's, you know, I, I don't know, Abraham Lincoln or somebody that no, nobody they can relate to. OK, OK, let me let me just give you a, a few things, factoids about Wilt Chamberlain. And OK. Uh, first of all, folks, here are some of the categories in which he led the league during his career. Minutes played eight times. Field goals made seven. Field goals attempted seven. Field goal percentage, nine. Led the league in field goal percentage nine times. Free throws attempted nine. Free throws made one. <laughs> That's what, you know. Assists, one. 78 triple doubles, including 60, 53 of them in two seasons of 66, 67, 67, 68. Um, and here's to how he reinvented himself. Totally reinvented himself. In 1961-62, when he averaged 50.4 points a game, he in 80 games, he took 3,159 shots, 3159. 11 years later, as a Laker, playing all 82 games, he took 586 shots. Wow. Oh, but did I mention that he shot 73% from the floor? <laughs> and, and also, he's playing with Elgin Baylor, Jerry West, yeah, correct? Yeah, well, Baylor's retired by the, that time. Oh, okay. Uh, Baylor retired in the 71-72 season, early in the season. and, and uh, uh, But the next year, Baylor's totally gone, and West is there. Um, he, so that's, it, that's, that's a massive reinvention when you reduce your number of shot attempts by 2,600. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> okay. Now, he wanted to lead the league in field goal percentage. And he stopped shooting anything but tips and dunks. Right. Almost exclusively. You know, he had a turnaround jumper that that people wanted him to take. You know what I mean? And hoping he'd hit the first one in the game. And I, this is the theory back in the, in the mid-60s when he decided he's going to show the world, I'm not some big freak that is just seven feet tall. I'm going to, I'm an athlete, which he was. Right. Well, athlete. he was. Sure, track and, and he, field. He was a track star at Kansas and all that. So, and of course, volleyball. And, you know, uh, okay. Okay. Um, he he had a turnaround jumper and everybody hoped he would make one early. So then he'd want to keep taking them the rest of the night, you know? <laughs> so Russell would let him make the first one, you know, that'd be good, you know? Then, okay. Um, it, he, he, it, by the time he got to the Lakers, he wouldn't shoot unless it was, a, he didn't shoot anymore. I right. mean, yeah, 82, that's four, two, eight, that's only five. That's, that's fewer than five shots a game. It, it, did that hurt the Lakers? No, they that that well that season the in, in 71, 72, uh he they won the championship. Right. And the next year they got beaten the Western Conference Finals by by uh, the Bucks. Okay. Oh okay. yeah, Lou Alcindor. Yeah, but um, ex excuse me, they beat no no au contraire, uh, they they did win. They beat they beat the Bucks and they got the, they lost in the finals to the Knicks, seventy three. Okay. Okay. They beat the Bucks. He outplayed Kareem at age 36, he was or seven in oh, that wow. series. Okay. But I just want people to understand what we're talking about this, the, the, what a phenomenon he was. Uh and and um, but but Daniel Gafford, no one's talking about this. I I mean, I can't believe that it's not worthy of somebody's attention. The guy shot 64 for 76. He's missed 12 shots in 10 games. It's worthy of Bob Ryan's attention. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's a tournament season or the fight for a playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Testing my skills on Prize Picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps. Prize Picks is really simple to play, and I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Use the code CLNS for the first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right. Now. There's a tournament going on involving uh, lesser paid athletes, but no longer 
unpaid, <laughs> right? And and we're and we're going to have that tournament in Boston. Did, did you say? Did you say unpaid? I said no longer unpaid. Oh, no longer unpaid. It involves for, lesser for, for, paid for, athletes than those okay. big games, but still, but no longer unpaid athletes. Okay. It's for a basketball championship of of of, of the uh, colleges and universities. Of yes. America. Yes. And we have uh, we have a segment of it right here in our own backyard. Yeah, and what do you think about that? Well, I I love having a tournament here, and 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 by the way, every time they have it here, it's first time was '09. We've had it. This is the fourth time we've had either a regional or a sub regional. People love it. They love. First of all, outsiders, you know, people come from people come. Outside, I mean, right? that's they the big it. thing. People they come want to come to Boston. It's a it's a tourist attraction. Sure. And I wonder how many people there are from Boston. Well. They, according to what I read in the Globe this morning, they 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 immediately sell out the, the, the tickets when they put them on sale. Oh, I, yeah, I'm oh. sure they do. I just don't know. I think I, I'd like to know, and it's impossible to figure yeah, out. Yeah, I, I, I would assume, too. You know, what's the percentage of people who are coming in from, no, I don't know, from other parts of the country to oh, right. see Boston? We're but not because noticed. it's just not a college basketball town. Yeah, we're not noted for being a college basketball town. Right. And we aren't. But, but this tournament, you know, belies that to a degree. Um by the way, I want to talk about quickly a couple of coaches um, uh, that uh, of, of note. One, uh, John Calipari has just been extended at Kentucky, and and uh, I, we learned that had they chosen to terminate him, uh, they would have been on the hook for thirty three million dollars. Yeah, so he's that's bad. a that's a buyout, folks. That's a that's a significant that's a buyout. buyout. But why would you fire Cal? Well, because the well, I said it would have been ridiculous. They're not going to get a better coach. You know, well, that's the, the my problem point. is they've I mean, only won one championship since he's been there, and that was twelve years ago. And and that and they they have this you know this self you know this that's who they are. And but they, they wouldn't have gotten a better coach. Who, who well, I mean, get? Bob. Let's face it. I mean, everything has changed when when it comes to. He, he brought in, and you, it, the, the rule or the feeling was you had to win with freshmen, right, who were going to go to the NBA. Well, he, and then, you know, he did that once, and then it didn't really work after that. So they've kind of had to change the way that they were recruiting, I assume. And let's face it, there are other schools that are that Kentucky's competing with. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And and uh, a lot of, a lot of high power. But that's just the Kentucky, you know, is. Mentality, is, I get it. In Kentucky, I, I'll give you the equipment. Kentucky is to basketball what Notre Dame is to football in terms right. of the self delusion of the of its fans. I mean, you know, I mean, there's nobody more pompous and, and unrealistic than Notre Dame football fans in the world of football. Right. You know, they, they 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 think they have a divine right. You know, and and Kentucky, it's the same way in basketball with Kentucky. Right. Uh, you grew up in Kentucky, um, you know, you feel that you have a divine right to to win, and and Cal delivered uh, has delivered successful seasons to a degree, but only the one championship. And then, you know, and the one year they should have won, I think he messed up because he should have played Devin Booker more. And he, he was, that was the year he was, he was playing two platoons, basically. Right. The playing time with 10 guys and his best player clearly was Booker and, and they should have won. And I, 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 I called him accountable for that one. Okay. But other than that, no. And I'm a, and I'm, I'm a John Calipari fan, unlike a lot of people around here. So uh, that's fine. Anyway, he pals back. At, uh, for, and they don't and they don't have to pay him thirty three million dollars. So they're, they're paying him a lot of money to start with. The other coach in the news, and I don't hope, I don't know if you've been following this at all, Gary, is Kim Mulkey at, at LSU. I, oh yes, 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 yes. Did you see? Did you did you see the rant and listen to it that she I made? Did not, but I did not. But I I did see I did see the headline. It was almost chilling. Her venom. She she like left off the sta uh, stage. She uh, denouncing. Uh, uh, Kent Babb of the Washington Post, uh, who apparently is working on a story, uh, and and uh, and and she she's deferred to him as a sleazy reporter. He's anything but. But fill that, everybody in, Bob. What's the what's the backstory on the on the article? Backstory is that Kim Mulkey is the most controversial uh, coach in, in college basketball, women's college basketball. She has won four championships. Uh, she is a cantankerous, uh, aggressive, uh, um, uh, outspoken. Uh, in many ways, her fashion sense is is is, is a source of great of delight and amusement for people. Uh, and, and I can urge anybody: you can go find it easily. Just go Google her up and, and go right. get her her, her long-standing fashion stuff. That's fine. That's fine. That's part of the fun. Uh, she's a great coach. There's no question. But boy, is she uh, she it's one of these people that um, 
I think she needs an en- she needs to be people that just have enemies that makes her fuels her ire her, her ire. But she's claiming that he that she told us that, that uh, he's been working on a story for two years and get she's resisted him giving him an interview for two years, and the reason is that uh, she said he wrote a hit piece about about Brian Kelly, and I just did a little research and and it's it was not a hit piece. She's right. crazy. It's wrong. Totally wrong. And and so then she made a big fuss last week because she said uh, after she was after telling us that she wouldn't talk to him for two years, and then last week he they there was some time thing where he wanted to talk to her for forty eight hours, and she said, "Well, we're pre- preparing for the tournament. I don't have time to do this. This is antagonizing. He's, he's trying to uh, harm my chances of our team winning and all that." And it was you got to go people go Google this rant of Kim Mulkey. So anyway, um, that's the story. The story hasn't appeared yet. Uh, it's, uh, but we're waiting for this story. She said that, that he interviewed players specifically to get them to say negative things about her. There's no evidence of this. No one has come out and confirmed that at all. Uh, but she's just, she went absolutely crazy last week. Meanwhile, you know, LSU's, you know, they're back, they're a contender and, and, uh, and, and they're the defending champion. And, and, uh, uh the women's thing, the final four the women's, uh, tournament is, is fascinating you because you got the caitlin clark phenomenon right i was saying something about, about that in a minute and uh yukon back in the mix Paige beckers and did you notice that gino Ariema uh cl- declared that Paige beckers is the best player in america you know and and and, and if you look at the metrics everybody knows it yeah i don't know which you know keep the fire going you know, oh yeah oh yeah 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 oh yeah geez. just turned 70 you know he's got he's still got his fastball you know um here's the thing garrett two days ago i was having my morning coffee at my favorite place in Hingham, the Red Eye Roaster, down at the Hingham Harbor, and talking with Bob Weeks, the proprietor, and a gentleman I do not know who, who uh, that, uh, and and uh, we were having a three-way conversation. And after we segued from the end uh, for the men, we got talking about the women and and you know the Caitlin Clark phenomenon and the whole thing. And and uh, every, we all had watched her all and and had opinions and all. And I said, you know something? I said, think about this that. Two years ago, forget about 10 years ago, no one would be having this conversation. And yet, right now, this conversation that three three male, males are having about the women's tournament is being held simultaneously at this moment in time in each of the 50 states somewhere. Right. About that. They have, and that's how far, that's what she has meant and what, and, and what it is the benefit that she has brought to college basketball. Now, Gino may be right, by the way about Paige Beckers. And that's fine. You know, don't forget Juju Watkins out in SC and, and, uh, and, you know, Hannah Hidalgo and Notre Dame. And suddenly these are names that people who are casual fans are getting to know, but think about that. Would you agree that, that, that I am almost undoubtedly right that, that with that conversation that three, three males were having would, was not unique to America at that, at, at nine o'clock Eastern on, on, on Tuesday. On Monday, uh, she's changed the narrative for basketball. She's the face of college basketball now. She's the face no, of yeah. college basketball. I mean, there's no male even close. I mean, the, the player of the year is right. Eight, you know, it, it, you know, it's fine, but no, nobody's male close. It, it's interesting. It really is. So, um, well, it's and, fantastic, and it's great for the game. It's great for young people, uh, all the way around. It's just tremendous upside. But she is, and she also, to me, like, I mean, I haven't studied but from i haven't studied her you know i haven't covered her like i have a lot of athletes you know yeah. before yeah. but she seems to embrace it oh you she's know up. she's got some swagger she's she got some you know is a star and right and she gets right. and she she she's been you know and kind of preparing for this uh and you know and and particularly she and of course one of the great things that people many people don't know or, or realize is that if it was going to happen, and there's a good um, New York Times had a good story to this effect. If it was going to happen, it's no surprise it's someone from the state of Iowa, because Iowa has been in the forefront, such as it was a women's basketball, in a way that most other states weren't. They I didn't were the, know that. they were the second to last state to get rid of the six person game. You know that was the college bas- women's basketball was right. for six people in, right into the '60s, and the last state was Oklahoma. But they were the next to last. But the women's tournament was always as big or bigger than the men's. Hey, huh. and your state, 
your home state is like oh, Maine. Right there. Yeah, Sydney Blodgett. Right. They may be the bronze medal winner, but certainly they're there. But oh, see, you know it's, 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 it's change the game. Yeah. Iowa has been a in the forefront of women's basketball for a long time. And so it, it makes sense that this this great player would, would emerge in uh, coming out of the state of Iowa. So, oh, she's a star. She embraces it. She's not, this isn't Nikola Jokic. That nobody wants, he doesn't want to talk about oh, it. Oh, no, she's great. No, she loves this it. Is, this, she's, she gets it. And and uh, that's why, uh, uh, you know, the and WNBA is drooling, you know, waiting oh, for sure. her to get in there. And, uh, but the thing is, it, it's, it's going to open a door. You know, people are going to be saying next year, well, I don't know. Hey, we'll see what happens. With Who's the next Caitlin Clark? Right. Exactly. So this is, this is a tremendous development. And so this year more than I know, I, for one, I've never had as much interest. I mean, I, I know say I never had any interest, but never as much as in the women's tournament as this year, you know, to see how it's going to play out, not just for her, but for Kim Mulkey and for Juju Watkins out there in SC and, and for Gino, I mean, UConn, you know, they're in the mix. They're not a top, they're not a favorite, but you know, you wouldn't be stunned if they got that final final four. Uh, Bob, before we go, any thoughts on the uh, the men's NCAA tournament coming? Yeah, up? Um, the tournament. It's very simple. The best team is UConn. There, there is no question in my mind that they are the best team, but they have lost three times, and and they're not invincible. They're not an all time great team. I don't know if they're as good as last year's team. They're right there. But point is, if it were three out of five or four out of seven. I bet the house, the rent money, the, the the everything on on UConn, but it's not. It's we know the nature of the tournament. Right. You can have a bad night, or you can run into somebody with a great night, and and you could lose. They can lose, but they ought to win. They're the best team. Um, uh, there's no doubt in my mind, but that doesn't mean that there aren't a few teams that can beat them, including uh, teams in their own league who have beaten them, like Creighton, for example. So um, uh, UConn, but I'm. It's it's a chalk tournament this year. There's, there's nothing resembling a Cinderella. Uh, the, the lowest seed is NC State, and of course they've won two championships in their time, and they're out of the ACC. As you know, they're not a, they're anything. They're they're not a little bit. They're not a minnow. You know, right. So there's nothing. And my other favorite story, my favorite story in it is Gonzaga, who is the 25th straight year they've been in the tournament, and 26th straight. Excuse me. I think yeah. Well, since since '99 and. Ninth straight Sweet 16, which is, I mean, that's a phenomenal achievement. That's amazing. That's because amazing. it's one thing to win that. The conference is not a top flight conference, you know, the West Coast Conference. Sure. It's, that's okay. But it's another thing to get in the tournament and, and keep doing doing it and doing it and doing it. Right. You get to the final 16. Nine straight years. Mark Few, what he's done there it is, is it, it, you cannot praise him enough. And, and um so that's good. Now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking for, I'm going to games in Boston. I'm going to final four. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm, I'm rooting. I'm unabashedly rooting for UConn to, to win. Does, does Goodman take you to dinner? <laughs> well, I, he doesn't have to at home. I'm, I'll be, you know. No, I'm, I mean at the final four. Oh, the, ah, the final four. Yes. We'll, 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 we'll work on that. one. We'll have a week to get we'll straighten that one out. That's it. That poor guy's so, going to be exhausted. Oh my um, God! I know he does. This is this season. I can't imagine his schedule. Yeah. Uh, all right, Bob. But well, listen, we will talk. We are going to record again on Sunday night after the weekend. Yes. Uh, so there'll be a lot. To to, about well, there'll be a lot to talk about. Great stuff. And we'll talk to you then. Bob Ryan, Gary Tangway, brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Prize Picks. Bob, enjoy the tourney. Thanks, Gary. We'll talk to you. Bye bye.